A while back we had a maple tree fall in our yard. So I thought this would be the perfect project to use some of that on. I really liked the brick pattern and the walnut accents were just such a good contrast to the maple. Let me show you how I built this. I'm once again hitting up my maple slabs for wood. This has saved me so much money and time shopping for wood. Of course, if you don't have the tools to dimension your lumber, you can always buy it already to size. In case you want to make this board as well, you'll need a piece of maple that is at least 17 and a quarter inches wide by 17 inches long and one and three quarter inches thick. Always good to have just a little extra. You'll also need a piece of walnut at least one and a half inches wide by 17 inches long and one and three quarter inches thick. I cut the maple into four pieces, 3.75 inches wide and one at 1.88 inches. That's just half the distance of that 3.75. That half piece will give you the perfect amount so that when you flip it, you have the brick pattern. Don't worry, it'll all make sense in just a bit. Then cut the walnut into four pieces, one quarter inch wide. My glue up is the same as you see me do time and time again. Now my glue choice seems to be a hot topic. So I'll just say I use a waterproof, food safe glue that I like. Feel free to use whatever you want. I really like these pipe clamps because they elevate my board, letting it dry on the bottom and the top, while also keeping it completely flat. Using a chisel, I remove the dry glue, removing enough to get a smooth surface so it will lie flat on the drum sander. I flattened out both sides with the sander. This can also be done with an orbital sander. However, I do enough sanding projects, so I bought this used sander and it has been well worth the money. At this point, I had a cutting board. However, to give it the brick pattern, I had to cut it again. Since my goal was an ingrain cutting board, I cut it at the thickness I wanted my cutting board, plus a little for sanding. I cut seven strips at two and one eighth inches. I wanted to end with a two inch thickness. Since the bricks had a kind of chunky solid look, I thought it wouldn't look right if my cutting board was pretty thin. That extra 1 8 inch will give me just enough for sanding any unevenness with my glue up to make sure that I end up with 2 inches. I finished up on the bandsaw for safety reasons. A lot of you have sleds for your table saw which would work as well. I cut 6 walnut strips a quarter inch wide and 2 8 inch tall. I flipped the boards to end grain up and rotated every other board to get that brick pattern. Then I placed the walnut strips in between. Here is where it was important to have one brick that was half the size of the others. This is how you get that pattern. My board measured just under 13 and a half inches. However, I noticed this one board had a lot of cracks in the wood that I didn't want to deal with. So I pulled that board, making it 11 and a half inches. I always try to make extra for times like these. Now to the glue up, same process as last time. One thing to mention, although the maple and walnut strips are end grain, the walnut strips are not. I didn't have the right size walnut to cut in grain and this gave me the look that I was going for. I'm also curious to see what effect it has on the look and how well it holds up. Everything's a trade-off and I decided I was okay with this one.
Just like the first time, I removed the dry glue to give me a flat side and ran it through the drum sander. Once it was smooth on both sides, I took it over to the miter saw and cleaned up the edges. I sanded the whole board down, starting with 150 grit and then 220. It always takes the longest on your first grit just to get out all of the saw marks and get everything nice and smooth. The other grits seem to move through so much quicker. Here I made a stupid mistake and I put in the finger grips first. Make sure if you do this to do the round over first. Because I had the grips cut, when I made the round over cuts on the sides, the wheel of the blade didn't have anything to rest on. So it dipped in a bit. I'll be showing you here soon. I totally kicked myself for not sticking to my process. The bit for the grips was already in, so I figured I would just save a step and start with it. On the flip side, I guess I'll never make that mistake again. Sometimes it's best to learn the hard way. I'm using my new half inch roundover bit, and I have to say, I really like the look on it. Before I was using a 1 8 inch roundover and you just could barely even tell that I had done anything. So I'm really liking this one. And the close up. You can see how the blade dug in there a bit. It left an indent in the wood. I moved back to the 150 grit to even out the mistakes I made with the finger grips. Then I sanded the round over and grips, working up to 220 grit. Time to wet down the board with water. This will raise the grain. You don't want to skip this step or the first time you use it and get it wet, it will be rough. Once dry, I worked through the grits from 220 to 360. To get the edges, I like to use a soft sanding pad as it will wrap around the edges nicely. I was really excited to try out this new mineral oil method. I bought some affordable food safe mineral oil off of Amazon and I poured it into a plastic container. I used two bottles of it so that my cutting board would fully submerge. And now for the part we've all been waiting for. I set the timer and let it soak for 20 minutes. I pulled it out and let it drip for a few minutes. And let me tell you, it looked amazing. The mineral oil had really seeped into every pore, all of the finger grips, everything. Then I wiped off the excess and set it aside to dry overnight. The next day I heated some Odie's oil and rubbed it in. What a difference that mineral oil soak had made. 
I won't make a cutting board without it again. It really soaked in and didn't leave any dry patches. I really like the look of this cutting board pattern and the half inch round over on the edges. There's a slight ridge between the walnut strips and the others, which I believe is because they are not in grain, but I'm very happy with it overall. Thank you for watching. And if you like this build, please subscribe. I'd also like to hear from you on what else you would like to see me build and how your builds are going.